in the beginning of this year, I did an F2P challenge restart project in order to gather information on how many golden heads you generate per day, how many equipments you can craft. Now that the new changes are here, Season of Conquest Commanders have arrived in KVK Season 3, what would be the best investment order for F2P players? Many people have asked me during my live streams whether they should still invest in Alexander the Great or YSG. And just for the heads up, uh, you no longer invest in to YSG, but can have very smooth transition going into a system of conquest without any power drops or whatsoever. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the best pairing that you can make in every KVK step-by-step -step transition that you can make and how you can min-max your progress. Hello everyone, my name is Pilikt and welcome back to the Rise of the Kingdoms. Before we start the video, I would like to provide some numbers. As an F2P player, you will generate on average 3 golden heads per day in your first year of playing this game and you will have approximately around 600 universal golden heads going into KVK3. You will also be able to craft 2 sets of epic uh, gear, meaning two full sets of epic gear uh, before KVK3 and you will be able to expertise your Ethelflaed on day around 180 who is you know the best legendary commander that you can obtain for free these are the numbers considering that you are very active and serious F2P player okay, with these facts in our mind let's dive straight into KVK1 in KVK1 you most likely be running epic commander pairings unless you get lucky with gold key commanders uh, by the way a new player watching this video you never invest into gold key commanders commanders that, that we see here because as you open the golden chest they will eventually get expertise and after you expertise that certain commander the extra sculptures that you can get from the golden chests are just wasted hence you save up your universal golden sculptures for much better investment all right let's now talk about the pairing and i'm gonna be using tier list to have a visual representation to you know understand all this information a little bit easier for infantry players the best pairing that you can do in kvk1 is bjorn plus sun Tzu. these two are very good on open field they synergize well they are tanky and they do a ton of damage yes there are other pairings that you can utilize for example if you are lucky and make martel uh, 5 1 1 1 uh, just from the gold key then you can use martel sun Tzu, or the other option would be um, if you have spun enough for the wheel of fortune and make richard at 5 1 1 1 at least then you can use richard sun Tzu as well and we also no need to forget about uh, the Ethelflaed commander. Uh, for Ethelflaed, you can pair Richard or Ethelflaed or Ethelflaed with Sun Tzu for infantry marches. But I recommend to use Bjorn and Sun Tzu because we kind of want to save up those stars for a KVK2 investment. And in fact, you know, Bjorn and Sun Tzu are one of the marches that you don't underestimate. They are very, very strong open field pairing for KVK1. We also need to understand that uh, by the time you enter KVK1, you will be able to expertise two epic commanders, okay? Two epic commanders and one of them being level 60. And you will only have enough golden stars to make only one legendary commander max level at level 60. But uh, I highly recommend for you to use Bjorn and Sun Tzu, and we wanna save up those stars for future investment, especially coming into KK2. All right, so infantry march, the best is Bjorn and Sun Tzu. Uh, other options, it depends on your luck. You can mix and match Martel and Richard, or you can uh, put Etiflet into the mix as well. Going into the archer pairings, Kusunaki comes into the first picture and Herman. Uh, for archer pairing, Kusunaki and Herman is quite good pairing. It's not as powerful as Bjorn and Sintu, but they're quite nice. It also gonna depend on how lucky you are with the gold keys early on. Uh, if you get Tutmus from the keys or Elsid, both at at least 5111 then you it is better for you to pair uh, for example 
Kusunoki and El Cid. Uh, El Cid will drop more uh, as compared to Tutmos, and you are most likely be able to ma make El Cid at 5111. Kusunoki and El Cid was the march that I used on my F2P challenge restart project, uh, and I played as an archer. And I just mentioned in the beginning of the video that uh, you no longer invest into uh, YSG. Previously, before the patch, you could invest into YSG, you could use Kusunoki YSG or even Ilsid YSG, but uh, after this patch, you just no longer invest into YSG. It is not gonna be worth it. I will provide the explanation as we talk about pairings when we proceed into future KOKs. Alright, third, uh, cavalry pairing would be Belisarius plus Babers. Uh, they are both very good, very tanky, and uh, Babers does a lot of AoE damage, so it is gonna be one of the powerful marches on open field uh, as a cavalry player. Of course, there is a uh, Minimoto and uh, CC pairing on open field for spenders, but uh, for F2P, Belisarius and Babers are one of the best options that you can have. All right, now going into KVK2. Uh, let's talk about the transition that you can make starting from infantry player, okay? So infantry players now can transition into KVK2 and use Alex plus Sun Tzu. You only spend 200 golden heads to make Alex at 5-5-1-1. You need uh, 10 golden sculptures to actually summon Alex and you need to use up 180 golden sculptures to make this skill f at 5-5-1-1 five, five, well, and Alex and Sun Tzu is gonna be one of the best uh, open field marches that you could have in KOK2. Previously, again, uh, when we used to invest into YSG, the best infantry march was Alex and YSG, but because we no longer invest into YSG and we are saving up those sculptures for KOK3, Alex and Sun Tzu is gonna be your next best option. Keep in mind that do not underestimate Alex and Sun Tzu combo. They do a ton of damage, they are very tanky and they are quite fast uh, because Alexander the Great is very fast commander. Well, one of the top pairings on open field if, if we are talking about KVK2. Uh, for archers here, archer just starts to drop. So archer players gonna be dead in KOK2 uh, because there will be no updates that you can make on your uh, pairing. Um, yes, you know, your L seat might be pumped up a little bit more uh, due to the gold keys, but you don't really have any other options. Again, we are not investing into YSG, so he's not an option. Uh, we don't invest into Edward as an F2P, that's no-no. And also Tomaris from MGE. H here we go. Archer players are basically dead in KUK2. Edward and Tomaris are for Wells. Uh, they both need to max out. They are mainly used for uh, rallying objectives. Now, let's talk about uh, cavalry player. Now cavalry becomes interesting. In KUK2, your option is to do Saladin and Ed the Flat. You also make Saladin at 5501. You don't invest more than 200 golden sculptures because in the beginning of the video I mentioned that in total you would have 600 golden sculptures when you are entering KUK3. So we are budgeting 400 sculptures of those, both for infantry and cavalry players. To the commanders that's coming into KVK3, those uh, System of Conquest commanders, we need to have for at least 400 golden sculptures as a budget. So we are sparing 200 golden sculptures either to invest in Alex or Saladin in order to not lose any power. Make Saladin at 5501 and your at the flat will almost be expertise in the beginning of KVK2 and you will have her expertise during KVK2. This pairing right here, Saladin plus at the flat, they synergize amazing and Saladin is very tanky. He has movement speed. At the flat does so good AoE damage, not the best, but she does a lot of AoE damage and most importantly, her AoE debuff is just so 
strong in open field no investing commander is going to be we forgot constantine so constantine we don't invest into constantine and genghis khan genghis khan is now mg commander and uh you don't invest into genghis khan as an ftp player so there we go this is the best pairing for going into kk2 with infantry and cavalry having the most smoothest transition only spending 200 golden heads to make Alexander the Great 5501 and Prayer Sun Tzu or you know for cavalry Saladin 5511 and pair him with at the flat all right so let us now go into KOK3 and here are the Cisnok Conquest commanders comes in the picture first off let's talk about infantry so we already have Alexander the Great at 5511 what we can do here is either we can choose from Scipio Prime or Guan Yu, let's remember that now we have 400 golden sculptures to spare. Either we can invest into Scipio and make him at 5551 and pair him with, or we can invest into Guan Yu and make him 5551 and pair him with Alex. These two options are both very, very good pairings on open field. Uh, Guan Yu is a little bit weaker as compared to Scipio Prime. Uh, he's, he does less damage, he's not as tanky as Scipio Prime. But uh, what he offers is that he offers one of the most unique skill in the game right now, which is AoE Silence. And that skill is gonna help you a lot when you are trying to crowd control the open field. But if you want a little bit more up-to-date uh, march that does a lot of damage, and it's very tanky and it's very fast, then your choice is gonna be skip your prime with Alex. Or there's another option that you can go, you can actually make two infantry marches. Because let's remember, in the beginning of the video, we have discussed that at this point, you would have two full, at least two full epic gear set. We can actually make two marches, and that would be Guan Mehmed and Scipio Alex. At this point, your Mehmed should be at least, at least 5-1-1-1. And Mehmed gets a pretty awesome relic buff. He gets 30% troop HP and 10% skill damage bonus. That relic buff is gonna help Guan to become a little bit tanky. There you can have your two marches. You have split your 400 golden sculptures into two commanders. Uh, making Guan at 5-5-1-1 and Scipio at 5-5-1-1. These two marches in KUK3 is going to be very strong. Now let's talk about archers. So archers were basically dead in KUK2, but in KUK3 now they get the most, the top number one open field march in the game at the moment, which is Boudicca Prime plus Zuglian. <clears throat> I couldn't find Zuglian commander icon in this tier maker, so... I'ma just have to edit <laughs> the icon uh, in the post video. Uh, make Boudicca at 5511 and make Zuglian at 5551 and there you go. With your saved up 600 golden sculptures, you invest into these two commanders and instantaneously have one of the most powerful open fielders in the game. Going on to the cavalry marches, you would still have Saladin plus Etiflet. They are still very strong in KK3 because they both get a relic buff. Unlike Alexander the Great, uh, he doesn't have relic buff at the moment, but uh, soon he will get. Total, they gain 35% attack and 25% march speed. They are gonna be one of the fastest open field march in the game in KVK3. And, uh, you know, they are already tanky. They are already doing uh, not bad amount of damage and they get 35% more attack, which is gonna boost their attack even more. For cavalry players, they also have two march op option, just like infantry. With the 400 golden sculptures, now you can invest into Nevsky and Joan Prime. Make Nevsky 5511 and Joan Prime at 5115. There you have your two open field march that is gonna be pretty powerful as we can see here infantry does have a pretty smooth transition cavalry does have a smooth transition archers archers has that hiccup during kuk2 but uh, in uh, kuk3 you instantaneously get very good march besides these troop specialization you can also mix your troop type for cavalry player going into the kuk3 you already have a Saladin at the flat. Now you can get 
instantly Boruka and Zuglian, uh, both at 5.5.1 with the 400 golden sculptures you have. And there you have now your Saladin and Head to Flat is very good support march on open field. And now you also have one of the most uh, powerful open field pairing. Uh, Putika and Zuglian, they, they even beat uh, Nevsky John of Warc one, 1 versus 1. Or you can also do Guan and Scipio, both at 5501 and run cavalry and one infantry march. Infantry players and archer players doesn't have this privilege as like a, a cavalry player. For example, infantry player needs to get one of these commanders, either Scipio or Guan at at least 5501. But now, after having this march, you would only have uh, 200 golden sculptures, and you don't have enough to make it into like build the Budokan and Zuglian combo or Nevsky and Joan of Arc combo, right? Yes, you can maybe like invest into uh, Nevsky and pair Nevsky with Mehmed, or you can invest into. Butika and pair Butika with Mehmed uh, with relic buff, but uh, it it's just a little bit weird for infantry players, right? Cavalry players have the smoothest and the best transition uh, in the game at the moment. All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day and peace.